Here's what's in front of them today. Stage 5 has six categorised climbs spread over 216 kilometres between Limoges and Le Liron. Three of them inside the last 35, starting with the Pas de Peyrol, the highest paved road in the Massif Central at 1,589 metres. Hard on the heels of that come the Col de Pertus and the Col de Fond de Serre. That's the last official climb, but once the riders are over it, the road rises again to the line. Chris Fr going faster and faster. He, he feels the magnet of the Maillot Jaune. That's why he's riding now like two men. There's a Belgian flag from Flanders as he goes by. Yeah, the Vlaams Alu, the Lion of Flanders, and it seemed to have inspired him here just a little bit further. He gets out of the saddle and kicks because he knows, Phil, pretty much once he's gone over the top of this climb, he doesn't have to find very much more energy. Downhill, he'll be touching speeds approaching 40 miles an hour, and it's really only uphill for the final four or 500 meters. He's one kilometer to go to the summit here for Thomas de Kent. They're both in the final kilometre. Well, they're not anymore because over the top is Thomas de Kent. Maximum points. It's only two points here, but still, it's all important at the end of the day. And I think uh, de Gent goes over in second. I think they're equal on points in the King of the Mountains now. Uh, de Gent will wear the polka dot jersey because uh, the yellow will be on the shoulders of Van Evermatt, whatever happens. Five kilometres to go for this very select chase group. Well, Team Sky, I think, are setting a pace which is not a pace to rip everybody apart, but just to keep a little bit of pressure on. But they do know, and they've all talked about, the final descent of the day. Locked onto the wheel, the AF builder, locked onto the wheel of Chris Froome was Nairo Quintana. We will see many more battles. But look at this descent. This gives oh, us this a chance bad. to see what is waiting for the main field. Now, it's not important for this man we're looking at, for Novomart. He can take his time going around these corners. But if one of the main leaders has a oh, look at this... Oh, the adverse. Camber. Now, this is the problem, Phil, for the main contenders because if uh, Chris Froome or Nairo Quintana or any of the other big leaders of the Tour de France has a problem here, they'll lose time on the finish line. See how narrow the roads are now. We drove down this and we remarked on it at the time. If you don't make the right turn at one kilometer to go, then you go straight in for the full on barbecue. I suppose the big advantage that the main contenders have had is most of them actually came across. This is one of the stages that they came out uh, and did a reconnaissance on. They will know this descent. And I, and I have to wonder why the organization, after such a brilliant day of racing today, found such a sketchy descent inside of the last two kilometers. Sometimes difficult to get to the finishing line any other way. That's the, that's the tricky turn. Keeps on going round, and there's the kilometer. One kilometre to the greatest moment of his life. Uh, quite interesting as Sporting well. Life. Sporting life, of course. Well, uh, as we see, this is Cyril Goche. He's the rider who had that little accident, little tumble on the way down the descent. He's about to get picked up by the big men, the big names of the Tour de France. But just going back to this, where we uh, the right, we kind of forget in the the excitement that BMC, although it's a Swiss sponsor, it is actually an American team uh, based out of Santa Rosa, California. What a great moment. He's led small tours of five and six days. He's never led a grand tour, and that's going to happen now for Greg Van Avermaet. He's got to fight time to the line is what counts as to how long he might keep this lead in the Tour de France. He's still got nearly six minutes on the peloton. Six minutes on the favourite of the tour. That's enormous. It is huge, and he should be able to keep this for quite some time, although once we start to get down to Bagnier, de Luchon, and some of the big mountains, it's going to be hard. Every second counts. They're driving him home. They've watched him on television. They're seeing a Belgian win. A mountain stage of the Tour de France doesn't happen often. Listen to that crowd. Thirty-one years of age. He's been a pro since 2007. He's never done this before. Salutes his team management. Salutes the crowd. Yellow awaits a Greg Van Avermaet. What a way to get it!
Yes, I've done it for my team, for Switzerland, for the USA, for me and for Belgium. I'm in yellow. Well, quite amazing, Phil, there. When you looked at his face, all of a sudden there, it was as if the pain was wiped away and the smile finally appeared. But another of the heroes of the day, you've got to admit, is this man, Thomas de Kent, who at the end of the day uh, will be crossing the line in second place. But if it hadn't been for his power in this breakaway, the breakaway wouldn't have built up a quarter of an hour. <laughs> Oh, the fight's continuing now. They're going to knock poor Greg off his feet. His legs must be shaking like jelly. Here comes uh, Thomas de Gent. Uh, a 1 2 for Belgium. I think we just seen an attack at the front there. This is uh, Warren Barguet here. Barguet, Barguet rather, Barguet. who's gone. He lives in Clermont Ferrand. He's more or less the local boy. And he said he was going to try to do it. Quintana's latched on to his third, third wheel. Valverde's got him. Seconds can be won and lost. Chris Froome has got to wake up. And TJ. Pino has got onto the back of the group as well. Alejandro Valverde is steer steering at Nairo Quintana into a very interesting position. Every time you've got a chance of getting some Here moments. Comes the sky. Well, Sky are making the move, uh, but I'm looking to see, and it's not the shape of Chris Froome. He's on the back foot at the moment. It's been a very tough day. And it was a very, very horrible descent, and that's still to come here. This could be very dangerous for the race as they come down to that one kilometre sign. And this is a great move by Movistar, and he's put Contador in trouble. Number 31 there, uh, Alberto Contour. He just can't get out of the saddle anymore, Phil. He's nursing himself around this race, and he's going to lose time at the end of the day. He's riding lopsided on the bike. He is struggling with that injured shoulder, which is on the right side. Bobby Star, Contador's just gone over the top, and this is not the descent for nervous people. Quickly there, that was uh, Rafael Micah there, uh, further up on the road, but this is a very cheeky little move there by uh, Alejandro Valverde and the man in second position. We go back to the second place finisher on the stage, Thomas de Gent. Thomas de Gent, second place for him on today's stage. A 1-2 for Belgium, two different teams. They've had a wonderful day out. Yes, he would have loved to have won, but hey, second place is pretty good. Brilliant ride by him. Uh, he lost a good chunk of time over the last few moments, but that's not really important when you're crossing the line in second place. Well done, Thomas de Kent, but more importantly, what is going to happen on the descent? We've seen the little acceleration coming here, and uh, Nairo Quintana said before the start of the Tour de France, any day, any stage is a stage where I want to grab a few seconds here or there. Well, this looks like Grifco now drifting back here. The peloton is speeding down on this very, very nasty stretch of road. Well, they need to pay attention because it is a very tricky, technical and narrow descent through the forest. And I tell you, it makes it much more difficult when you're in and out of sunshine like this. You, and the man who really saved a Chris Froome there was Sergio Anayo, the rider from yeah. Colombia and Team Sky. He never panicked, but he dragged Chris Froome back into contention. Well, one after another now, they are in a desperate trouble here at the moment. So number 107 here is Serge Powers. He was in that breakaway. Still, it looks like Valverde come forward here, and he's not going to give up uh, right until the very line. They're inside the final kilometers. Look at the way Valverde looks over his shoulder just to make sure yeah. that Nairo Quintana is on his wheel. This is a great thing to see a former Brill. Well, he's still a great champion, but he's working for his mate, and they're putting time into Contador. Well, Contador is coming back after that descent. He's got the right turn coming up, and remember, he'll lose seconds if he doesn't get onto the back of this line of riders. Valverde is come to this Tour de France to guide Nairo Quintana to victory, and that's exactly what he's doing today. He put Froome in on the defensive, but Froome has come back, as has TJ Van Garderen. As has Richie Porte over on the right-hand side. TJ Van Garderen is on the left-hand side. This is Rafael Maika coming up towards the line, and a great uh, tip of the hat to, to Huzarski. A very good ride by Huzarski. That's an outstanding ride for the Bora rider, but it's the Polish champion who will take third, at least, I think, he's third because we can't keep up with where everybody is but I think it's third for Micah and so that's some consolation for Tinkoff who've lost the race lead today with Peter Sagan former king of the mountains and a three-time stage winner third today for him
What a terrific day of racing. Kudzarski better go for it because they're right on him. And Micah better watch out at 150 meters to go. Well, that's Dan Martin knows leading them home in there the from the Etix quick step in the blue, and he's just ahead. It looks like Alaphilippe has recovered. Martin gets in, Alaphilippe just behind her. Alaphilippe's going to keep his young rider's jersey. Now, there is a gap here, and there is Contador. I think he'll lose three no. or four seconds. Now, that was Kreutziger. That was Kreutziger at the back coming across oh, the line there. Coming. Contador is further down the road. And these gaps will all be separate times. Once they're a gap of a second, they change the clock. So he's losing time, but what a fighter he is, Paul. He won't give up, but you have to wonder how long he can nurse his oh, injured body through sorry. these next few stages. What a great ride by Alberto Contador today. I don't think he's telling us the truth about his injuries. I think he's really suffering. But he's in, and he only conceded a few seconds. Well, that was Matthias Frank coming in there as well. Well, this is Serge Powell, who went straight through the group and is now bringing up the rear. Look at the time on the clock. Well, we will have a new leader in the Tour de France tonight. His name will be Belgian. He's from Lokeren and is Greg van Avermaet. A great victory by him. Two and a half minutes ahead of another Belgian, Thomas Sekent. And the Belgians will climb to the top positions in the overall standings on time and in the King of the Mountains as well. So the mountains of Contal have had a good story to tell on the Tour de France today. And we're only stage five. The finish line super slow-mo camera doesn't miss much, which can either be a curse if you'd rather hide behind your mirrored lenses all the way to the team bus, or the chance to ensure that the high point of your career is captured at 200 frames per second for endless replaying at home. Here's the stage result. Greg Van Avermaet with two and a half minutes over Thomas de Kent. Plenty of time to think about a finish line celebration, with Rafael Maika almost caught on the line by Joaquin Rodriguez attacking off that group of favourites. They were at 5.04, the rest at 5.07. The rest led home by Dan Martin and including Julian Alaphilippe, Adam Yates, Chris Froome, TJ Van Garderen, Richie Porte, Roman Bardet and Fabio Aru. Geraint Thomas lost a few seconds at the end after shepherding Froome up the climb. Alberto Contador came in at 5 minutes 40, 33 seconds behind the Froome-Quintana group. Chris, Movistar put on a fair amount of pressure there, but you came back fighting in the end. Yeah, I mean, for us, it was just about staying up front. Those descents were pretty pretty tricky, pretty dangerous, um, and not really losing any major time to, to other GC guys. Obviously, we knew the breakaway was going to stay away today, um, and the, the jersey's gone to Van Avenmaat. Uh, he did a pretty impressive ride there. Um, yeah, from our side, we're, we're happy with that. We're happy with that, happy to stay out of trouble and one, one more day down now. And by virtue of doing all of that work, Movistar did leave themselves outnumbered by you guys at one point. Was there any question of maybe sending some guys down the road then? Not really, not really. It wasn't really in our interest today. It was more about just, just keeping out of trouble. Um, the, the, the big GC days are still to come. Uh, today was one of those days where, yes, it was selective, but it wasn't necessarily going to be a big showdown between the contenders themselves. And Contador's lost some time. Nibel has lost a lot of time. Surprised by that? Um, surprised by Vincenzo, yeah. I would have expected him to be coming here uh, with his A game. Um, but to be honest, with, with Alberto, um, that's, that's quite normal after a big crash that, that he's had, or a couple of big crashes that he's had. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, no one really wants to see that, uh, ourselves included. I'd rather, rather gain time on the mountains from him, not, not because he's hurt and injured and, and suffering. Well, I'm not sure which of those three Vincenzo Nibali was, but he finished in a group at 13.45, conceding over eight minutes to the other favourites. Here's his take on what went wrong. Ah, niente, tutto a posto. Eh, normale, sapevamo che potevamo fare molto bene qui con la squadra con, con Fabio. Oggi magari eh, ho cercato di rimanere davanti, però le gambe non erano molto buone, quindi ho lasciato perdere ogni cosa. Peter Sagan evidently came to a similar conclusion a bit earlier in the stage. By the time he rolled in, Thomas de Kent was already on the podium getting the King of the Mountains jersey. So he was quickly wheeled in the direction of the podium himself to swap yellow for green, which he still holds by four points from Mark Cavendish. 
Well, we thought today might clarify things slightly at the top of the standings, but it's just muddied them further. Greg Van Avermaet now leads the race by 5 minutes 11 seconds from Julian Alaphilippe, with Alejandro Valverde still third. Joaquin Rodriguez is up to fourth, ahead of Chris Froome, and the group of favourites whose order has been slightly shuffled, although they stay level on time with each other. Alberto Contador, though, is now a minute 21 behind that group, and Vincenzo Nibali nearly nine minutes adrift of the other contenders. Greg Van Avermaet isn't a contender except for breakaway win of the Tour, for which he's a leading candidate since he's the first to succeed this year. And his win, like Cavendish and Sagan's before him, brings him the first yellow jersey of his career. Greg, it's been a season of ups and downs for you, uh, and this is one of the big ups. Uh, talk us through that. You made some good decisions on the way to winning that yellow jersey today. Yeah, I think so. It's it's quite hard to wear in yellow here in the Tour. I did the Tour several times, and it's uh, my first yellow. I think for a type of rider as me, it's really hard to get a yellow jersey, and uh, I'm so happy that I that I have it. Stage win is something, but uh, wearing yellow is uh, the most beautiful thing, I think.